Good afternoon and welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Let me start with some home thoughts. This is Mount Kenya National Park, photo by Jeff Hennessy, and probably the safest place to be is up a mountain. Political reflections, 36 evacuated from China to France show virus symptoms, says a minister, AFP. And as I was saying in my rather long article over the weekend, I think we're going to get more accurate data from analysing evacuees. Because as I've said previously, I think the numbers are massively undercounted in China itself. Um, this is Dr. Tedros, that moment when you cough at the World Health Organization, that was via RT, um, who always tend to get these rather um, clever clips. Um, New York Times, Wuhan coronavirus looks increasingly like a pandemic, experts say. The coronavirus spreading from China is now likely to become a pandemic that circles the globe, according to many of the world's leading infectious disease experts. It's very, very transmissible, and it almost certainly is going to be a pandemic, said Dr. Anthony S. Fauci, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease. But will it be catastrophic? I don't know. In the last three weeks, the number of lab-confirmed cases has soared from about 50 in China to more than 17,000 in at least 23 countries. There have been more than 360 deaths. Those numbers have been overtaken. But various epidemiological models estimate that the real number of cases is 100,000 or even more. Some estimate 500,000. The 1918 Spanish flu killed only about 2.5% of its victims, but because it infected so many people and medical care was much cruder then, 20 to 50 million died. By contrast, the highly transmissible H1N1 swine flu pandemic of 2009 killed about 285,000, fewer than seasonal flu normally does, and had a relatively low fatality rate estimated at 0.02%. The mortality rate for known cases of the Wuhan coronavirus has been running about 2%, although that is likely to drop as more tests are done and more mild cases are found, or alternatively more cases are found to have not been uh, placed in the books. It is increasingly unlikely that the virus can be contained, said Dr. Thomas Frieden, a former director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, who now runs Resolve to Save Lives. This looks far more like HNN1 spread than SARS, and I am increasingly alarmed, said Dr. Peter Piot, director of the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Even 1% mortality would mean 10,000 deaths in each million people. Dr. Michael Ryan, head of emergency responses for the World Health Organization, said in an interview with Stat News on Saturday that there was evidence to suggest this virus can still be contained and the world needed to keep trying. Thermal cameras miss victims who are beyond incubation and actively infecting others. The real number of missed carriers may be higher than 75%. The virus's most vulnerable target is Africa, many experts said. More than one million expatriate Chinese work there, mostly on mining, drilling or engineering projects. Also, many Africans work and study in China, 
and other countries where the virus has been found. If anyone on the continent has the virus now, I'm not sure the diagnostic systems are in place to detect it, said Dr. Daniel Bausch. That's what I was saying over a week ago. At least four African countries have suspect cases quarantined, according to an article published Friday in the South China Morning Post. They have sent samples to France, Germany, India and South Africa for testing. In God we trust, Dr. Schaffner said, all others must provide data. Now, I wrote recently a quite an in-depth article, which is worth looking at. I know it's 17 pages, um, and I'm deeply grateful to all the people whose information I used, and I've credited them in the article. Um, and I was speaking about non-linearity and exponential risks, which is the intrinsic nature of a virus. 27th of January, I also wrote about this, and I said the number is massively undercounted. Of that, I am sure. And that viruses exhibit non-linear and exponential characteristics. This is a short video from RFA underscore Chinese, and actually, sifting through short videos on social media has been um, uh, given me strong confidence of the underreporting that we are seeing. The nucleic acid of the novel coronavirus was found on the door handle of a confirmed patient's home. The Black Swan 2007, which is of course Taleb's uh, totemic work, discusses the risks of a virus spreading owing to the increased connectivity in the modern environment. Connectivity increases fat tailoredness. Zhang argues that there are more and more cases of group infections within families and with some cases with no initial symptoms, the current policy of asking these suspected patients to exercise self-quarantine at home causes the epidemic to spread further. Think about that. Emirates, apparently, are now flying Boeing 777s, not its double-decker Airbus 380s, on some routes to China over lower demand following the outbreak. These aeroplanes are vectors of disease spreading. Just think about the air circulating inside what is a tiny tube, in point of fact. UAE, meanwhile, says students and staff returning from China must stay out of school for 14 days. I wrote about this new hyper-connectedness of the world. Once coronavirus starts to spread, there's no stopping it until it's done, said, the, said an expert, Michael Osterholm, PhD, argues coronavirus will not be able to be contained. Have a listen to his video on Fox. Meanwhile, in Shandong province, there are signs of group infection through being on local trains. The city of Wuhan has 24 cases in total, but among all the cases, 16 contracted the virus after taking the train. Ningbo in East China, Ziyang, reported three cluster infection cases on Monday, in which a woman was first infected with the coronavirus after having a meal with people from Wuhan. The infection then spread to 25 other people. David B. Collum, who's some, somebody I rely on, errata, assuming the data is not complete bullshit, which it is. The total recovered versus death continues to fall. Rumors of remain immunocompromised screw-up is unknown. Then I.S. China, whose the nature of his uh, uh, videos are quite uh, uh, attention-grabbing. Come on, lady, let's go. It's just the flu, he tweets. Coronavirus may transmit along fecal oral route, Zinua reports, and this is a huge problem for Africa because our sewage systems are 100 years old. 
The coronavirus that's infected more than 14,000 people in two dozen countries may be transmitted through the digestive tract, Chinese state media reported. Virus genetic material was discovered in patient stool and rectal swabs, Xinhua said on Sunday. That means the pathogen might be transmitted along the fecal-oral route, not just from coming into contact with virus-laden droplets emitted from a sick person's cough. The Diamond Princess cruise ship with 3,700 people on board sits anchored in quarantine off the port of Yokohama. So, plenty of fast-moving fluid developments. I mean, I remain of the view that it's got its escape velocity, that we're in that exponential phase. Um, and, uh, you know, the risks that it presents for the global economy are enormous. We looked at that in detail yesterday. Um, and I do feel that a lot of information has been suppressed. And as I wrote on, you know, in my first article, there has clearly been some DNA modification. Okay, let's move on to a fantastic thread by Man Integrated. Food, energy and water are the three things that sustain civilization. The oceans offer an abundance of each. Established by the UN in 1982, exclusive economic zones were created to resolve maritime disputes. They have done anything but. Under Jungklos III, nations now manage a variety of sea zones. Territorial sea, 12 miles, is sovereign. Contingent zone, 12 to 24, partially sovereign. Exclusive economic zone, 24 to 200, rights to resources. Outside the territorial sea, a nation must allow passage of foreign ships. Pre-20th century, international maritime law basically was a gentleman's agreement, often backed by ruthless force when commerce broke down. Sea power was everything. Now power is projected via logistics, infrastructure, and regulatory capture. In the past few days, I've highlighted how China's Belt and Road Initiative has been a Trojan horse since 2013 for securing critical geopolitical footprints and resources throughout Eurasia, Africa, and South America, he says. Further, UNCLOS 3 also opened up ambiguity on an issue that previously was plainly understood, what is an island? He says China exploited a linguistic loophole about artificial islands to begin its annexation of the South China Sea. The Horn of Africa and Northern Mediterranean coast are a region where EEZs have become a flashpoint of regional tension one such example is the current civil war in Libya, which has sucked in numerous foreign powers. The real prize is not just the crude oil locked in Libya's ground, it's also their 200-mile uh, uh, EEZ. The eastern Mediterranean Sea continues to betray its wealth of energy resources, especially natural gas, and Turkey has made the strongest play yet for it. It is not just the pursuit of natural gas in the Med where Turkey is exploiting EEZs and maritime boundaries, he says. The quiet but enormous influence Turkey and its ally Qatar holds in Somalia is now paying off as well. As in Libya, Turkey is mixing commercial and political tactics to secure its interests in Somalia. The prize, 15 oil exploration blocks offshore of Somalia. The thing about offshore drilling is that it has a high upfront cost and requires years of ongoing revenue to pay back investments in exploration and infrastructure. Political stability is paramount 
Turkey investing into Somalia is a sign of their confidence of control. The wild card for Turkey is the resolution of the long disputed maritime boundary between Kenya and Somalia. The EEZ related claim covers part or all of eight exploration blocks currently under Kenyan control and leased to several oil companies. It would be wise to assume that Turkey will push for a settlement in Somalia's favour, he says. Kenya does not share Somalia's deep ties to Turkey, another of which is a Turkish military and training base outside Mogadishu. Of course, now I'll go to some of the articles I've written. I said, of course, there are many other frontiers, the Mediterranean Sea, the Sahara Desert Islands, because of the EEZs they control. Africa has a coastline of over 47,000 kilometers and 13 million square kilometers of collective exclusive economic zones. Uh, at the time of the FOCAC Beijing summit, Chinese president in his speech at the opening ceremony um, said, in addition for those of Africa's least developed countries, heavily indebted and poor countries, landlocked developing countries and small island developing countries that have diplomatic relations with China, the debt they have incurred in the form of interest-free Chinese government loans due to mature by the end of 2018 will be exempted. I wrote about the Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation on the, in April 2019. January this year, I wrote about the intrusion of middle powers. I was focusing on Libya specifically. Uh, 6th of August 2018, I spoke of an Indian Ocean economy in a port race, and I was touching on exactly this in the Horn of Africa. And to wit, King Salman held discussions with the Prime Minister of Greece, and uh, we saw some photographs there. And, on the, and that's interesting, isn't it? Because it, the alliance here is between Saudi Arabia, Greece, and others, and on the other side, you have Turkey, the Libyan, G, uh, the, the GNA government in Tripoli. Um, I also wrote in my article in January, I remain a little surprised that the UAE and Saudi Arabia have not visited economic warfare on Istanbul because it does look ripe for the plucking. But then Al Thani is probably providing a backstop. This is referencing the currency. Um, as the media breathlessly reports on anything involving Russia and diligently provides air cover for China, one nation has positioned itself to be the axis of the 21st century's balance of power. Turkey, says man integrated. Today, Inchilik remains a crucial NATO asset, with a number of air-launched B-61 thermonuclear bombs still allegedly stored on that base. He says, Turkey is the mother of geopolitical choke points. NATO must keep Turkey. Um, uh, black, uh, extensive Russian naval assets in the Black Sea must pass through the Turkish Straits. Middle East and nat national gas, natural gas and oil pipelines must pass through Turkey. China's BRI must go through Turkey. NATO must keep Turkey. A resurgent Ottoman Empire would necessarily reach to the Balkans first. Neighbouring Greece would be the first target, given the long acrimony, man integrated again. Greece holds multiple important NATO assets. I wasn't aware of the, the nature of them. Larissa Air Base, Naval Support Activity, Suda Bay, Araxos Air Base, Alex Alexandropolis Army Base. The US is making heavy investments already. Moving on, climate models are running red hot and scientists don't know why. And this is what I was touching on a few years ago when I said we're like frogs in boiling water because these models are now telling us that we've reached a tipping point and an acceleration point like a virus. Dozens of climate models and for decades they've agreed on what it would take to heat the planet by about 3 degrees Celsius. It's an outcome that would be disastrous, flooded cities, agricultural failures, deadly heat. But there's been a grim steadiness in the consensus among these complicated climate simulations. 
Then last year, unnoticed in plain view, some of the models started running very hot. The scientists who hone these systems use the same assumptions about greenhouse gas emissions as before and came back with far worse outcomes. Some produced projections in excess of 5 degrees centigrade, a nightmare scenario. Climatologists began talking to each other like, what did you get? What did you get? said Andrew Gettleman, a senior scientist at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado, which builds a high-profile climate model. The question is whether they're overshot, said Mark Zelinka, staff scientist at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. If the same amount of climate pollution will bring faster warming than previously thought, humanity would have less time to avoid the worst impacts. His model produced a result of about 4.3 degrees centigrade warming, a 30% jump over its previous update. We hope it's not the right answer. Hope is not um, the, the, the answer. There are more than a hundred models used to forecast the relationship between carbon dioxide and warming, developed by about two dozen independent research groups. One question modeling can help answer is called climate sensitivity. An estimate of how much warmer the planet will be once it is adjusted to atmospheric CO2 at double the pre-industrial level. The model run by NCAR, one of America's main climate science institutions, started producing unusual data late last year while trying to re reproduce the recent past. We got some really strange results, yes. Mm. By solving that puzzle, Gettleman's team sent future projections upwards at an unheard of rate. NCAR found that CO2 doubling would lead to 5.3 degrees centigrade world a 33% jump from the model's past reading on global warming. So, it was known in the research community for, let's say, about a year, more or less just passed unnoticed. Two researchers recently suggested that the world is currently on a pathway to warm 3 degrees centigrade by 2100, but that estimate could be as low as 1.9 degrees centigrade, or as high as 4.4, guaranteed it's high as 4.4. Here you see people fleeing Australian bushfires in December 2019. Here you see a gap created by flowing water at the edge of the Al Aletesh Glacier near Better Mahalp in Switzerland. 30th of September, I said the end is nigh. I spoke of a feedback loop and the risks of dieback where we enter a phase of cascading system collapse. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We're at the beginning of a mass extinction, and she's right. Even if people don't like her, she's absolutely right. November 2015, I said, I cannot help feeling we're like frogs in boiling water. We have created massive interference in the cosmic fine-tuning phenomenon. Let's go to the markets. Let's start with the Euro 110. Uh, 63 last, dollar index 97.828, Japanese yen 108.87, Swiss franc 0.9672, the pound is at 130.13, the Australian dollar 0.6724, having a good session, India rupee 71.1945, South Korean won 11.8761, Real 424.79. If I was going to sell one of the emerging market currencies, it would be the Real and the Rand. Egyptian pound 15.81. I would be long the Egyptian pound. South African Rand. Last time I checked, 14.8245. 15.50 target. Dollar index. This is a chart from Chi Girl. She's bullish about it. Um, Euro dollar, as I said, 110.63. Uh, meanwhile, the constant that never changes, Tesla is up another 15% today to nearly $750, up over 300% since, since September. In uh, October last year, 26th, I started noticing the move and I called it the parabola, a curve each of them feels unmistakably. It is the parabola. At 26th of October, I tweeted, I have to commend Tesla's Elon Musk for teaching the world about what a short squeeze really looks and feels like. And my God, 
I said then it was like a SpaceX launch and look at it now. In the other direction was Google just moved $100 in less than five minutes according to Chi Girl. Commodity markets gold, which I would have thought would have done better. 1572.25 last. Crude oil fell below $50 for the first time in more than a year and is now at $50.70, but expected to fall again below 50, I think. One chart is from Bianco Research, the other one is from Chi Girl. Sub-Saharan Africa, Cameroonian student in China contracts coronavirus. Thousands of African students trapped in China's coronavirus province, African Bismag, Around 4,600 African students are currently trapped in the Chinese province, which sparked the fast-spreading coronavirus, according to data gathered by Beijing-based consultancy Development Reimagined. Should the students wish to return home, the Chinese government is seeking assurances they will be safely quarantined for a period of 14 days on arrival. That's if they're spotted. The UK, US, France, Japan and Australia have already evacuated some of their citizens who will be transferred to secure units for two weeks in order to help curb the pandemic. According to data seen by African Business, the countries with the most students in Hubei province are Ghana, 408, Nigeria, 361, Ethiopia, 305, Zimbabwe, 288 and Tanzania, 281. There were 81,562 African students studying throughout the whole of China in 2018. The window to leave the country may fast be shrinking as airlines across the world cancel flights to China in a bid to halt the spread of the virus. Africa's largest carrier, Ethiopian, runs six flights a day to five destinations in China, including Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Chengdu and Hong Kong. The busy airport in Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa, serves as Africa's gateway to its largest Asian trading partner. I've spoken about that before. Now, moving on. Concord has, Constitutional Court has nullified May 21, 2019 presidential elections and has called for fresh elections. That's Malawi. Look at this footage of Mutharika at the UK-Africa summit. The chat wasn't focused at all, says Ali Naka. Second country in Africa to annul a presidential election. Malawi's judiciary offering a rebuke to the election observation missions. And this was called the Tipex election. And look at how from SADC to the EU, everyone gave it, you know, the tick in the box. Business as usual on public broadcaster TV station, as one would always expect. And then there's some video courtesy of RTV of the judges arriving under armed escort. And then at 6.50 p.m., Haru Mutasa posted transport and security for judges outside court long way. So, big move. How are they going to afford a new election? I don't know. I think it is one of the poorest countries on the continent. I've been there a few times. Okay, moving on. I welcome Prime Minister Netanyahu and his delegation to Uganda. I'm certain this visit will strengthen our relationship with Israel. This is the fifth visit of Netanyahu to Uganda. Um, this photograph was posted by Noah Landau of Haaretz. Um, Netanyahu hopes Uganda will open embassy in Jerusalem in the near future. Oh, we hope to do this in the near future, he said in a televised speech during a visit to the Ugandan capital. He's going to open one up in Kampala. Museveni, we're studying that. How Lorenzo uh, says, uh, reacts to the Luanda leaks. He says he's not negotiating and he will not negotiate with anyone who has been indicted or charged, uh, including Isabel dos Santos. He says the deadline to pay back the money in exchange for the pardon has passed. Portugal welcomes Dos Santos' sales of stakes. Um, uh, Portugal's uh, economy minister, Pedro Cesar Veritol Reuters, saying that would avoid any potential damage to them as she battles fraud charges. Eurobic, she's the biggest shareholder. FRKEC, where she owns 65%, have both said Dos Santos has started the process of selling her shares. Her willingness to divest quickly is helpful good step because we want to avoid any reputational damage impacts in the activity of these companies. 
Bank of Portugal said late last month in the last euro bit about Sonangol banking account transfers between Angola and Dubai. And you remember that fellow committed suicide. Zimbabwe, Edman Ngagwa pleads with the church to cast out demons afflicting Zimbabwe. I urge churches to continue fasting and interceding for us in leadership as well for the realization of our national vision. God does not give nations bad plans. God gives us good plans to prosper as a country, but we need to pray to God for that blessing. From left, Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa, VP Constantina Chiwengwa Manangagwa, First Lady Auxilia Manangagwa in prayer. 9th of September last year, I said Manangagwa has been eulogizing Mugabe as a revolutionary icon has failed and is frankly as untenable as his erstwhile mentor. I saw this footage from Politics 2014 SA. You apologized to Nigerian drug lords. You removed a deputy minister of police for speaking the truth. You're only interested in appeasing African leaders, even at the expense of South Africans. Uh, it's a short video. South African all shared down 2.2%. Dollar rand 14.8250. Egypt's population expected to hit 100 million this month. Six in 10 are under 29 years old. 97 of the population is crammed into just 8% of the land. And the workforce will reach 80 million within a decade. <clears throat> Um, creating new space for housing, schools and hospitals is a priority. Biggest problem is jobs. Uh, to create enough jobs, annual economic growth needs to be at least triple the population growth. Based on population growth of 2.5%, that would require 7.5% GDP growth. They're at 5.9%. Officials say they've managed to bring down fertility rates. Population will grow to 153 million by 2052, and if the fertility rate were 3.4, it would hit 191 million, he said. Egypt has been the darling of international investors and the destination for the best carry trade for a number of years. Egyptian pound is at 15.8. Uh, Egypt's 30 is down 0.6%. Nigerian all share up 6.3%. Ghani Sedi is the year's biggest winner against the US dollar. Currency of the world's second biggest cocoa producer strengthened 3.9% in 2020. Most among more than 140 currencies tracked by Bloomberg, a turnaround from last year when it weakened 13%. They're doing a Eurobond for about $3 billion. Ghana Stock Exchange down 1.99% year to date. Swedish government changes its strategy for development cooperation with Tanzania. The new strategy differs from the previous strategy in that it entails reduced support with reference to the negative democratic developments in the country. New strategy means that Sweden will strengthen its efforts in prioritized areas such as human rights, democracy and gender equality and environment and climate. Um, this new strategy needs to focus on marginalized groups and defenders and bearers of democracy. Locust swarms threaten more countries in East Africa. There are also other countries at risk, South Sudan, Uganda, Eritrea. One swarm has already been seen in Eritrea, several sighted in Oman and Yemen. Capital economics, as Kenya's local locust infestation currently contained in the country's thinly populated and economically marginal northern counties. UN does not expect that the bugs will spread into key crop producing areas in the Rift Valley. This is a map of the locust swarms. Exodus 10, if you refuse to let them go, I will bring locusts into your country tomorrow. They will cover the face of the ground so that it cannot be seen. They will devour what little you have left after the hail, including every tree that is growing in your fields. They will fill your houses and those of all your officials and all the Egyptians, something neither your parents nor your ancestors have ever seen from the day they settled in this land till now. Luke 21, 11, there will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and pestilences. There will be terrors and great signs from heaven. Revelation 6, 12, 13, when he opened the sixth seal, I looked and behold, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth, the full moon became like blood, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree sheds its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. And I said, it certainly feels like a decade of semiotic arousal when everything it seemed was a sign 
of some future radical disjuncture or cataclysmic upheaval. President Kenyatta issued a presidential proclamation announcing the passing on of retired President Daniel Arab Moy. President Moy's son, Gideon, addresses the press in this short video by Citizen. This was Kenya's new cabinet, November 1979, via MMN Juk. Trump will meet with Kenyan president as trade talks set to begin. This week, as the two countries prepare to announce negotiations on a free trade agreement, America's first such deal with a sub-Saharan nation. The pair will hold an expanded bilateral meeting on February 6, according to Trump's official schedule released on Sunday. The Chinese embassy in Kenya has urged all Chinese-owned companies in the country to quarantine all employees returning from China for 14 days. Oil, which has hit a 12-month low, um, is actually very positive for Kenya. Kenya spends about 18% uh, of its total imports on oil. Nairobi oil shares down 2% year-to-date. NSC20 is down 1.86% year-to-date. Thank you for listening.